welcome back in this video we will see how to use custom fields in extended logging and we will try to print credentials in the access log before watching part 2 i would recommend you to watch my previous videos on logging i have added the links in the i button and description if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe my channel for more interesting videos related to web logic administration or soa development so let us discuss under what scenario printing credentials in the access log can be beneficial so let's say this is your web logic server and uh, some source system is calling your service now that source system is getting http 401 that is unauthorized error and the source system is claiming that uh, they are using correct credentials now if you want to see on your end like what credentials are passed by the source system then to trace the issue you can enable this field in your access log and print credentials whatever is passed by the source system so that you can tell the source system uh, that uh, boss you are passing incorrect credentials so it can be helpful to debug issues or to identify what credentials are passed by the source system so remember don't enable flakes which is going to take processing time otherwise it can impact the performance of your server as far as printing credentials in the access log is concerned it is not going to impact your performance so you can keep it enabled if your client policy allows it without any further delay let's go to our documentation i will provide all these links in the description and i will also create a git project and uh, provide that link in the description so that you can download uh, whatever we are going to do next we have referred this document in the previous video and uh, it provides us predefined uh, fields which we can use in the extended logging but in this video we are going to create a custom field for that we'll have to create a java class so this is the document as per this document we'll have to create a java class and it should implement this class so let's see how we can do this uh, if you scroll down you will find a java code here so we'll simply use this java code and customize this as per our need so for that we'll use eclipse as a ide uh, you can use any other ide if you want so for that we'll create a java project for the sake of simplicity we are going to give the same name which is uh, there in the example so this is the class name and uh, we are going to use the same as a project name so let's copy this click next finish so here we have one java project and in the source we are going to create a java class and again we'll use the same name and we are going to use default package finish now we will copy our java code from the document and as you can see it is giving us error because we'll have to uh, add this dependency so that it can identify those classes so uh, we will require a jar file and i have uploaded the jar file in the git project as well so let's copy that jar file uh, first i am creating a folder here and let's name it lib so this is the jar file we'll paste it here and we'll add this to our build path for that right click and add to build path 
now you can see those errors are gone and uh, here we have our get header method so we are going to get authorization details so i am giving authorization here now if you explore this uh, you will see that there are so many options where you can also get uh, the date month or any other values like time or a year so there are multiple methods available here so this append value dash method means it is going to print value or if that value is not found it is going to print dash so we are going to print our credentials that is going to be printed in the base 64 format if that credential is not found it means like uh, if that service is not enabled with the basic auth then in that case it will print a dash there now here you can see we have matrix object so that matrix object belongs to this http accounting info uh, class and uh, it can give you http header related uh, information so this object is having multiple methods and you can use those methods here like uh, you can print or type or content type context path header method or protocol n number of methods are available so as per your requirement or scenario you can print those values uh, in the access log so for our scenario we want to print our credentials so this code is sufficient for us we'll save this code and we will export this as a jar file so for that you'll have to right click here and you can export it so i am choosing jar file next and uh, you can go with the defaults so this is the path where it is going to save it i am choosing different path here and i'm giving the name of jar as the same which we have used earlier so for the simplicity i have choose similar name for the project for the class and for the jar file you can click next next and finish so if you go with the defaults your jar file should be created and here you can see our jar file has been created now we will have to copy this jar file to our lib location uh, that is inside domain lib i have already copied this jar to domain library now we will have to add this to extended logging fields so for that we'll have to go to weblogic console uh, here we'll go to the server then logging then http and uh, we'll have to go to advance now we'll take a lock and here we'll have to add this field so it should be x hyphen name of the class so name of the class is my custom field we'll copy this and we can put it here once this is done you can save it and activate the changes and we will restart our server so that it can reflect in our access logs so let's restart our servers now let us check our logs to see whether that jar file is loaded or not for that we will go to our server log and here we can search our jar file so you can see while restarting the server our jar file was loaded so our server has been started successfully now we are going to test our service and we will see whether our access log is having credential details or not to test this out we will use our script which we created in the previous video let's see what we have inside this script again so we simply have a curl command and here we are passing our username password 
so our goal is to track this username password in access log so let's invoke this script repetitively so that we have some logs in access log let's do that for that i am running watch command and uh, giving minus an option with three means it will run this script every three seconds so you can see our invocation was successful and uh, here you can see this is the credential we are passing to invoke the service this is our basic auth credential which is encrypted in base64 format now let us check access log and see whether this value is there or not and here you can see we are able to track our credentials in access log so let us try to decode this again using online decoder so i am copying this value so this website is there to encode or decode base64 values i'm simply putting our value and uh, decode it and you can see we have our username and password decoded that's it for this video in the upcoming videos i will come back with more interesting topics if you found this video helpful please like my video subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification and don't forget to leave a comment so that i can cover different different topics for you thank you